Welcome to episode one of Spotlight on Sound. With me, your host, Eugenia Batoki. Today we're joined by Lebo and Sia, South African duo who come together and make frigid armadillo. Guys, welcome to Nairobi, welcome to Kenya. Welcome back. Thanks for having me back. Uh, it's always good to be here. Thanks for welcoming me. That's, yeah, that's, that's, that's nice to be here. Really I'm, glad, I'm glad to have you guys here. Um, you're here for tonight's performance, Gondwana. We were talking a bit earlier here about your worries of how packed it's going to be, how many people are going to be there. <laughs> what, what are your worries around that? Um, it's, I think it's, it's just stage fright. It's, it's normal stage fright. You know you're in a new country, you want to make a good impression. You don't disappoint the people. You know, life happens. What if I, uh, I mean, what if I have an off day? Everybody has an off day. Even Messi has an off day. So yeah, I think it's just normal stage fright. We'll definitely get over it. A couple of tracks into it, we'll warm up to the crowd. And then yeah, hopefully we take it from there. Would you say you're ready? Would you say you're as ready as you could be right now? Yeah, I don't think we can get any more ready than what we are. Um, I think we'll be okay though. Like what Lebu said, after like one or two tracks, we should be um, feel it out and, yeah, then, yeah, and then go you'll, from you'll there. See, you'll see how clownish selves come out. Fantastic. Yeah. Um, Sia, so yeah, you've been in Nairobi for the last week, correct? Yeah, correct. What have you been up to? Have you been up to anything musical or? No, actually I'm here for other forms of business, for work actually. Right. So yesterday I had an event for um, an alcoholic brand. Right. Um, so I finished that, and then this this is what I really look forward to the whole the whole week. I've been looking I mean, forward to we, this. We still need the nine to five to keep the lights on so that the music can keep churning for now. You know? Really? Yeah, is, yeah. is is this not yet pulling all the weight? Uh, not yet. Not yet. No, it's getting there. It's it's growing. It's growing exponentially and it's growing very steadily. Right. But it's not at a point where you can now make that jump from corporate to and music. abandon. Exactly. Not just yet. Exactly. You still you're still amalgamating it. You know, like getting it all to come together nicely but yeah, it's not the right yet. right right and if i'm not wrong this is your first gig out of south africa as frigid armadillo what's that like what is the feeling like of now look i'm global you know or let's say i'm africa <laughs> i'm african i'm cross africa i mean this is it is global because i think africa right now the sound in africa is especially representative of a global trend I mean, you just need to look at the last two, three years of music. So once you make it at home, you kind of have what it takes. Uh, as, as to how it feels, I don't think it's kicked in as yet. I don't think it's... Like the conversation we're having off camera, if you remember that. Right. It just feels like an extension of home. It feels like you're visiting an aunt. Right. It feels like you're visiting a cousin. It doesn't feel too different. Moving forward from that, you said it doesn't feel that different. What... What are the small differences that you've seen so far? You've been here a matter of hours, <laughs> you know. Uh, Sia, you've been here for a week about. What are, what are the differences, the major differences you see between South Africa, between uh, Kenya? There's traffic every day. <laughs> is, that, is that not, uh, it's not that? That's not a thing. There's no? traffic at 6 a.m., 10 a.m. It's just traffic throughout right. the day. That's, that's a bit weird. And just... Um, I don't know, just, oh, you guys are really, really friendly. Like, super, super friendly. Incredibly. Like, incredibly is is incredibly that welcome. not a thing back home? I'm not going to say it's not a thing like we're, like, <laughs> like of course, mad yeah. people. No, 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 no. We're, we're just, we're less, we're less welcoming than you guys are. You're very, very, like, I could get stuck at the airport at midnight and still right. find my way around somehow, just with the kindness of strangers. For sure. Um, that is a little rare for us because, yeah, we're just from a place where everybody's out to look, for, look out for themselves. So, just got to be careful. Right. You know, yeah, no, if you're not from there, don't come there. Don't. You need to watch out. You need to be a bit, <laughs> a bit more back. tactical with it. So, um, Frigid Armadillo, that's, that's the both of you. Rome in a Day is now synonymous, right? I mean, that's the song that has blown up. I mean, I played it almost every single gig I played last year, right? For me, that is a masterpiece, right? How, how has that song alone changed how you produce, how you perform? I mean, before that, how... How well known were you? And then the change. What has that one song done? Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm a little see how to this one, but I just want to start with the well known part. Yes. How well known? Not known. <laughs> we didn't exist before Rome. That, right. that, that's the reality. Like, it was that, that, that level of being known where, like, you know, your, your grandmother knows, like, right. ooh, da -da. Like, you yeah. know, that's like, where well, it's cute, it's a hobby. Yes. But yeah, it wasn't. I'm, I'm, I'm going to take over from there, though. It's, it's weird because when we made the song, we didn't really think much of it. I mean, we thought it was a nice song and probably just, you know, end up with a few thousand likes and, you know, comments and whatever. 
And I think the day the tide turned was when Black Coffee played it on his home brew sessions. And I was like, oh, okay. It's funny because I I remember I saw an Instagram message on my phone and said Black Coffee is now live. So I just went and I tapped on it. And it just so happened that as I tapped on it, Roman a day was... So nobody coming. sent it to you. You saw it as it's happening he live. Saw it. He saw That's it and incredible. let me know and I thought he was lying. I'm like, okay, why are you this lying is a to me? <laughs> I, I will drive to your house and we're going to fight about this. We're going right. to fight. Right. Don't lie to me. Yeah, because it's big. Like, it's yeah. playing right now. So I went on mine as well and I'm like, wow. How did that feel? That must have been... It's Black Coffee's an icon, it's, right? It's, what, what, what does Black Coffee playing your track mean to you? I mean, that that must be massive. It's weird, man, because we've never we've never had that before. Like, I mean, we've, like I said, we always had like comments or likes, but to actually see or hear someone yeah. play what you've created. Also, as a practical thinker, yeah. your first question is, where did he get it from? <laughs> like, there was never a time when anyone sent it to him. It's like it just. How did he find it? How did he find it? Like, you're just yeah. you're just trying to like piece together, trying to connect the dots, figure out okay, how did we get here? Because this is all very surreal right now. Just it's too organic, you know. You study marketing, you do marketing, you have marketing plans, they never work out. And, and it just happens organically. Boom, just organically just right. that coffee has a song. It's mad. Right. Uh, talk about marketing, Sia. Yeah. I've seen in a previous interview that you didn't like music very much growing up as a child. No, I could not stand I didn't understand it. Let me let me say I didn't listen to music. I had there's no musical background at home. So I'm the first. I just randomly picked it up, thought nothing of it. And well, here I am 13 years later, still at it. So that switch happened 13 years ago when yeah. you, you got into music? In high school, because there's a whole craze of virtual DJ at the time. Bedroom DJs, virtual of course, DJs. Yes. Of course. So I was like, ah, what, what is this thing? Let me try it. And it just so happened that I understood it like quickly, very quickly. Like within a day, I understood what was happening. And then from there, I just naturally you progress into producing and that as well didn't take me too long to understand i was like okay maybe there's something here but i didn't think i'll be here like years later yeah. and uh, between the both of you who's the producer who's the dj oh no we're both both you're both both, we're both, both. there's no i'm the head producer and i'm the head dj <laughs> no, there's, there's, like, no, there's no, but I, I will be, I will tell you how like we are structured, I guess, as Frigid. So, Correct. Uh, Sia's like our, I like to call him our baby engineer. So he has to oversee all the songs before the engineer. Mixing, mastering. Yeah, okay. yeah. So he does the baby mix. Right. I look, I think his mixes are pretty solid, but like he doesn't doubt himself. And that's like, that's a him problem. You'll get over it eventually. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> but yeah, so like, essentially it's sort of like the, the power dynamic is a, we like to say a Mr. Miyagi and Daniel Sun sort of power dynamic. Right. And that's how Frigid works. But both of us do everything. There isn't like a DJ and a producer. Right. No, yeah. So anyone can step in to take to take over because anyone can step in in case the other is not able. Exactly. Let's, say my, let's say my flight for some reason was delayed. So you would be able to do the entire set by right. yourself and vice right. versa. Okay. Well, you're here. You're playing t- tonight at the Gong Race Course Gondwana. The fame that you guys have achieved in the last couple, in the last year, what is your end goal? What is your let's let's start with the most iconic or the most ideal venue for you guys to play at? <laughs> These are expensive Don't, questions. Let's not start. Let, <laughs> no, let, let, we'll have to take the Vatican venue. out of this. Oh, Vatican Apart out, from the okay. Vatican, sure. there are so many. Um, it's funny because maybe five, six years ago, I remember we had a made a song. And we thought, wow, this song is going to take us somewhere. <laughs> I remember when What was the bedroom. name of that? I don't even remember the name of the song. It was like, it was, it was an EDM style song. You know, when EDM was like EDM was at peak. its peak. Yeah. So we thought, okay, let's make EDM so, you know, we can get in the game and show people what we can do. So we thought, wow, this song is going to take us far and we're going to be on main stage at Ultra. Ultra is the one. So I would say just a virtue of that that conversation we had Ultra would be nice just to I mean, close, yeah, yeah. close off the dream right just I to mean, say nothing say, came of that yeah. song as well so <laughs> <laughs> well I mean the dream, the, the dream is still alive the, the dream, dream is, is still definitely still alive, still alive. Yes. and in terms of inspiration artist inspiration I know this is a very common question it seems you, you go the less traveled route I mean Frigid Armadillo already the name that's it's, I think it's a spectacular name makes you think you know it yeah. makes you think um 
inspiration, do you have any specific artists that have given you inspiration sound wise in maybe the way they carry themselves, maybe the way they are on social media, maybe the way they dress? Are there specific artists that you look up to in, in any of those ways? I have, yeah, they're, they're, for me, there are a couple for different reasons. Like, I, uh, one, really appreciate, like, Casper Yovis, business acumen. Right. Um, I, I just, I dig the way he does business. I, I love the way that Prince KB can brand himself and always keep making, he can keep reinventing himself every single album. Right, right. So, like, I think he's four albums deep now. And it, it doesn't sound old. It sounds right. familiar, but it doesn't sound old. And that's, it's very tricky to, to, to be familiar without being old. Um, I love how Black Coffee has taken a sound globally and like shown how you can literally impart a sound that isn't conventionally European to European people. And spread it across. Spread it across yeah. the globe. Right. I mean, now he's a superstar. Black Coffee is a deep house demigod. Like they'll, they, they, I don't think there's ever been a Black Coffee before Black Coffee. I don't know if they'll ever True. be one after him. Because he's just taken music that shouldn't be as good as it is. And everybody is is head over heels for it. Exactly. It's fantastic. He's made, he's it made really people is. who don't listen to it fall in love with it. It's crazy. He's made Ibiza mainstream, which yeah. is insane when you think about it. That like Afro Tech is playing in Ibiza. And Roman a Day. And Roman a Day. And, and everybody's day. dancing to it. These are things that shouldn't happen. Like in theory this should not be possible right so i think you're yeah, different people for different reasons um but yeah that's that that that, that that's See, what about you up. what what's my answer is less sim- it's it's more simplistic Go on. um influence i would say at the time when i got into the whole thing it was when dead mouse was massive at the time of course I listened to him like a lot. I studied his songs. I was like, oh, why don't does my music sound as big or as good as his? And then gradually, like obviously, I listened to more, say, South Af- Afro-ish, South African sounds. And I think that's kind of what Frigid is. It's a mix of... Like a fusion. Right. A little bit of, of the dead mouse with the heavy synths. Yeah. yeah. And the percussion exactly. from the Afro. It's a definitely yeah, a fusion. Like, it's just a fusion of everything. I mean, at first, I didn't think it would work but somehow we make it work and i can't really tell you how we do it if you ask me how i made how roman a day was made i can't tell you it was just spontaneous we sat there together did our thing and yeah was that a one session uh, no it's never one session <laughs> it's, it's it's but the, everything was laid down we're very slow workers but it's because we're methodical so right rather than just have it released for the sake of releasing Let's have it released and we're proud of it. One final uh, wild card question. Do either of you have any absolutely useless talents? It's pretty oh, useless. Oh, I can do an armpit fart. Like, you know, like, yeah. That, that, can yeah. you do Rome in a day? In the... <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I, can't, I can't make it notes. Right, right. See, so, you know, do you have anything? I don't, I don't think I, I, I spend my time figuring out my useless talents I'll be honest you're a critical thinker yeah you just cut it out it's not necessary yeah. it's gone yeah. Yeah. And, I'm, and I'm the armpit yeah. fart guy so, yeah. see, that's what the I'm balance doing. is there I, <laughs> see, it. Exactly. I see it alright guys it's, it's been a pleasure hosting both of you here for our first episode of Spotlight on Sound welcome again to Nairobi Kenya uh, we're all looking forward to tonight's performance no pressure um we hope you feel welcome in Nairobi, Kenya. Uh, you're welcome back. And uh, if you have anything to say to those who have followed you, those who will be following you moving forward as you grace our stage this evening, what would it be? Shlumas? I think you need I was going to let you have this one. Okay. Uh, um, I guess thanks for supporting us. Keep supporting us. Um, and there's new music to come. I know we're a bit slow, but trust me, there's a lot, a lot to come. Thank you again, Eugenia Potoki, signing out from the Spotlight. See you on the next one. <laughs>